she was one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen in my life. And I still have pictures of her, you know, when she was 20. All my memories of my mother are just fond. And I mean, she was a genuinely good mother all my life. I was very, very busy raising three children and loving that and raising horses on my ranch and doing volunteer work. I had a very full life, busy, busy, busy. My kids were in soccer and baseball and things like that. When I was run over by a truck in 1992, I was in shock. My whole life changed instantaneously. It was the 4th of July on my family ranch in Texas, where I'm from. We were coming in our truck from the barn right here. And as we were approaching, I saw my sister-in-law driving down the road in her truck. And I thought, well, if she stops, I'll get out and we'll talk. And so she did. And so I got out, and I guess it was right here, actually, where the truck was. And we were having a disagreement. Wow. She drove off in a hurry, and when she did, my hand was on the door handle. I was running alongside, trying to get my hand out and screaming, and fell. And when I fell, I was dragged until my hand disengaged, and I fell under the truck. And I was crawling and clawing the gravel to try and get away, and I couldn't. And it went over my, up my spine and over my head, and crushed my face in the rocks. My dad had already jumped out of the, the truck and was screaming, and I got there, and of course, we both thought you were dead. When I was in ICU, they could only recognize me by my hands. Just, oh, my poor, beautiful mother. And I had friends who didn't know what had happened to me. If I, if I saw them on the street and went up to them, they just fell apart and started crying and were horrified. My husband divorced me and left me. Um, he became a really bad alcoholic. It was very traumatic for him, too. But for nine and a half years, I was totally disabled. I've had 30 surgeries on my face. I don't know if it was a dream or if it was a vision or whatever, because I was kind of groggy after the surgery. And I had these images of, and I, it, not an image that I had remembered ever seen on my dad's face, but just this lecherous look. The memories that were coming back were of, of abuse by him, not just fondling, but, but fondling me but also raping and threatening to kill me with his hands around my neck when I, when I fought. I guess the shock of the trauma cracked this very good denial system I had built up in my life. <laughs> I just really was angry I was alive. But I thought about killing myself. I would buy myself time, say, well, okay, that's always an option, but I'll wait six months because I've got to be here for my kids today. I'd always been a super doer, an overachiever, a need to know person. And to be able to say, I don't understand and I don't need to understand and that's okay. It was kind of a catalyst of a healing process in my entire family. But it was very scary. And in my life, integrating, accepting all of my life is part of healing. There you go. I have horses. I found them very healing to me. I had seen him at one of my stepdaughter's wedding. We knew each other years ago. And he asked me things like, did my nose work? And I liked and appreciated that, you know? And what was it like having been beautiful and then not? He wasn't afraid to talk to me, to talk about things. And we got married a little over two years ago. His name is Happy. 
and we have a wonderful life together. He calls me beautiful and I love him. <laughs> yeah, it is a strange truth, but the truth is I am a happier person. I am more grounded, more centered, more connected and integrated with who I am and grateful for who I am today. I'm working with other people now as a practitioner. I think that you can make a choice and that you do make a choice when things happen in life. <laughs> oh, this is fun. I haven't just stood out in the rain in quite a while. There's a general uh, lay sense that all adversity is bad, and the scientific research doesn't really support that. One of the key ingredients to happiness is being able to recover from adversity more quickly. So it's not that people who are happy don't respond to adversity. They do. They show a, an appropriate response to adversity, but they come back down to baseline quickly.